Hello fellow lovers of good opera singing and welcome. With this video I am continuing my series of reality checks. I recently saw a performance of Lucia di Lammermoor with Javier Camarena. I had included him in my video on good modern singing and many of you had complained about that particular choice. He has no voice, he wrote. It's tiny, too nasal. In one phrase, bad modern singing. I must confess that I had not listened to him live previously to making the video. My choice relied entirely on commercial video recordings. And yes, even there, the voice sounded not too big, but it seemed big enough to create great effects in major houses. So I was curious about this one. But first let me talk about the other singers. The Enrico of the evening was Georgian baritone Michael Bartatze, who had won an international singing competition in Berlin only last year. He was announced slightly sick, and in that curious announcement they even described the effect that illness would have on a certain region of his voice. The illness, so the announcer, affects his middle range. But in reality it must have affected more than that. He could almost not be heard at all, except when singing high notes. These had a good sound to them, and Mr. Bartazze looked good. But the rest was throaty, the voice sounded as if it was stuck and did not carry at all. Which is a pity, as Mr. Bartazze does have an unusual interesting timbre. All things considered, it was a lackluster performance. Speaking of stuck, throaty voices, the bass, Byung Gil Kim, was heard even less, even though he was not announced sick. I cannot understand how on earth such voices can have a place in A-houses all over Europe. He's still young, he should restudy and learn how to get his voice out instead of singing to the inside and backwards. He's one of those singers where you could say, maybe he should have turned around while singing and then his voice might have projected better. And since we are talking about disasters, well, as to Mr. Camarena, I stand corrected. Edgardo is not an easy role. It contains a long way, a quartet where the tenor has to stand his ground against three others, well, obviously, and a rather hefty dramatic scene in Act 2, where another Mexican tenor, a certain Rolando Villazon, infamously lost his voice. I'm sure you all remember that one. Then there is the long finale, which is a true killer and a challenge for any tenor, especially when sung in key. The list of acclaimed Edgardos goes from Dupre to Caruso, from Martinelli to Filippeschi, from Raimondi to Kraus, whom I heard in the same production many years ago. And let me tell you, Camarena is of a different stamp. Camarena is a tenore di grazia in the style of a flores. The voice is pretty, but also pretty small. Edgardo's tessitura is high, but the dramatic touch of the role requires a strong middle range, which does not come natural to Mr. Camarena. So he thickened and rounded his voice in the passaggio, which resulted in slightly hoarse, poorly projected notes. It sounded as if his chords did not close properly. As soon as the orchestra picked up some volume, he was practically inaudible. His acuti were there, and when the orchestra did not play, they sounded reasonably well, as in the end of Tom Bedelia Vimier.
The role, however, is definitely too big for him. He did not manage to lend any character to the role, and even his bel canto antics, i.e. his occasional interpolating high notes, had no noticeable effect. On the contrary, they made no sense musically and were sung in what sounded like reinforced falsetto. The whole presentation was surprisingly ineffective. Camarena sounded out of his depth, old and tired. He definitely isn't too old, he is born in 76, but maybe he is tired. Maybe he has sung too many Nessun Dormas, and it is a great pity. The material sure is beautiful, but he should lift what he can lift, instead of picking up weights that are too heavy, doing a few reps in poor form and get sore. I can't understand how singers take on roles that clearly are too much. You usually feel it in your throat when something is beyond your possibilities. Or at least you should have coaches who can tell you what to do and what not. There is no shame in singing lighter roles with authority. On the contrary, I'd rather listen to a well-sung Alma Viva or Don Ottavio than to a mediocre Edgardo. Finally, the soprano. Romanian coloratura Adela Zaria did a decent job. Her voice is round, soft, has enough heft for the role and climbs the highest range with ease. Whenever she sang, the rest of the ensemble disappeared, volume-wise, that is. She also looks the part. The only thing I wished for was more color and charisma. Other than that, she was the only singer who lived up to the high standard the Deutsche Oper is aiming and still known for.
The staging was traditional, and I don't necessarily mean that in a positive way. It was dusty and boring. But then, when the soloists are good, you won't need fancy visuals or a new regie concept, which is difficult to achieve anyways, considering the ludicrous libretto. All things considered, this was a mediocre performance, mediocre being a euphemism. The soloists that stood out beside Mr. Aria were Arturo, sung by American tenor Thomas Cilufo. He outsang Camarena with ease, and the flute that accompanied Mr. Aria in her final scene. He or she, forgive me, I can't tell, did a good job, as did chorus and orchestra. So, Mr. Camarena, take a few steps back. Stop singing rap that's too heavy for you. Stop singing stuff like Bloody Nesundorma. You don't resemble Calaf, not even in concert. Some people may say, well, leave him alone, in concerts he can do whatever he wants. Okay, but to me it's wrong. It's like Lily Pons singing Turandot, like playing Rahmaninov on a Fisher Price. A funny stunt, yeah, but useless, especially when it harms your instrument. Reconsider your true vocal identity and save whatever is left of your beautiful voice. Speaking of which, a certain Rolando Viazon was scheduled to take on Edgardo a few days later. He cancelled. Thank you for watching.